Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Lenore McLean and I'm a physiotherapist on the positioning and mobility team at Sunny Hill in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And I'm Ginny Palig. I work in early intervention in Silver Spring, Maryland in the United States. And I'm Rosalind Livingston, an occupational therapist also based in British Columbia, Canada. And we're very interested in supported standing for individuals with non-ambulant cerebral palsy. And by supported standing devices, we mean standers or standing frames, devices that position people in an upright and weight-bearing position. Individuals at GMFCS5 can't stand without total support. And those at GMFCS4 might be able to stand for short periods holding on to someone's hands or a surface, but they can't maintain an aligned weight bearing position without a standing frame. We completed a scoping review to look at all the evidence around use of standards with individuals functioning at GMFCS4 and 5, and it was recently published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. A number of systematic reviews have looked at the effectiveness of standing or weight-bearing interventions on specific outcomes, and they consistently say that the evidence is low quality and no strong recommendations can be made, which is not so helpful for clinicians who want to provide evidence-informed practice. In our paper, we included all types of studies from randomized control trials to case studies. We completed the first synthesis of the qualitative and descriptive literature to examine the lived experience the barriers and facilitators of standard use, and we evaluated population-based and survey data to see if there were differences by age or GMFCS level. We searched a wide number of databases. We hand-searched, we contacted known researchers, and we spent a lot of time making fun graphics. In the end, we included 59 citations. We found 16 systematic reviews and six guidelines that included supported standing, as well as 37 primary citations. We were pretty excited to see so many participants at GMFCS level four and five included. In 499 in the intervention studies, 17 in the qualitative studies, and another 585 children and young adults up to the age of 25 in cross-sectional and survey studies for a total of 1,101 participants. Scoping reviews are supposed to describe what is known, not to evaluate effectiveness. So we presented the conclusions of all the systematic reviews and primary research studies visually on these graphs for each outcome. The shaded gray box in the upper right represents positive recommendations and low risk of bias. Diamonds represent systematic reviews and circles are primary research. The largest amount and strongest evidence investigated the impact of supported standing on bone mineral density and prevention of contractures. What's most exciting is that almost all of the evidence is in the positive half of the graph. In the hip graph, one small older study found that prolonged standing with feet together has a negative influence on hip stability. So positioning in some hip abduction is now consistently promoted in clinical practice. The evidence so far suggests only short-term benefits for spasticity and the improvement in bowel function, gross motor function, and ADL have been described mainly in case studies and single subject designs. One of the big messages about the quantitative evidence is that lots of systematic reviews have been conducted, but the evidence level isn't going to change unless more primary research studies are completed. And so on the whole, standing programs appear to be well tolerated. 30 to 60 minutes, five to seven days a week were most commonly reported. And these other messages are the themes that emerged from the qualitative synthesis. Children and families believe that standing can help to maintain or improve body structure and function and help with their physical management. And they reported that the change of position can enhance their hand function and increase social participation. But environmental factors are a huge influence. You do need the right standing frame with the features that promote alignment, function, and comfort. And you also need to be able to get the person in and out easily. Mm -hmm. The standing program needs to be integrated into age-appropriate activities that fit into the child, the family, or the school routine if it's going to be used. While the experimental research evidence may not be strong, there are clear psychosocial benefits from being in the upright position for engagement and participation with others and how the person is perceived by their peers when standing as opposed to sitting. 
One area that requires more research is the impact on physical fitness because supported standing is not passive for individuals at GMFCS levels four and five. Changes in heart rate and energy expenditure have been demonstrated in small studies. The need to reduce sedentary behavior in children with cerebral palsy is increasingly discussed, but there's hardly any mention of non-ambulant CP. Supported standing may be one method of enhancing social participation, functional abilities, and physical fitness. Another message that came out strongly in the qualitative studies is that children and young people need choice in where and when to stand. Standing needs to be integrated into either the school or home routines for activities where the change of position is beneficial and increases function and engagement. We hope you find our paper useful and we welcome your questions and comments.